Right, that'll do. This is a super ultra wide and it's absolutely massive as you can probably tell. This is a 32 by 9 aspect ratio display with a resolution of 5120 by 1440 and like I said, it's absolutely massive. Now for those of you who don't know, a standard ultra wide monitor has an aspect ratio of 21 by 9 and a common resolution is 3440 by 1440, which I know isn't actually 21 by 9, it's 21.5 by 9, but let's forget that. This then is a 32 by 9 or a super ultra wide. It is 49 inches diagonally, it's almost four feet wide, and it's just absolutely insane. It's basically two 1440p 16x9 monitors sandwiched together, which means that you can fit two standard 16x9 windows, say web browsers, side by side without having any lost information. Now you probably have two main questions here. One, what's it like to game on? And two, why would you want one? Let's actually start off with the latter since this is mostly a productivity display. This is something that you would use in your office, maybe as a creative professional for the, the ultimate premiere timelines, or even just as a, you know, Excel worker, whatever, being able to have multiple windows open. Specifically, you could comfortably fit three fairly standard sized desktop windows open on this without really losing any information is absolutely fantastic. I know that people who do work with very large, say, Excel databases with uh, stuff like tables that are hundreds of columns wide, this would be great for them. But also, it's just generally great for, for product productivity if you can manage having the windows in different places and you know not having them on different displays where you can use Windows Snap a lot easier. That's probably the main concern I would have with this. But like I said, this is really a productivity monitor at heart. Now, to answer the former question, the experience is absolutely fantastic. If you thought I wasn't gonna game on this, you would be sorely wrong because it's actually very, very nice. The, the field of view that you get, especially if you sit only a couple of feet away, it totally encompasses your peripheral vision and it is an absolutely fantastic experience. In stuff like CSGO, where in FPS titles, you're gonna get more benefit out of it because you can kind of use the, the peripheral vision to your advantage. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Impressively, the actual panel itself really isn't uh, bad as a gaming panel. I think in terms of black to white response time, you're looking at about eight milliseconds, which while not, you know, the snappiest 240 hertz display is certainly not bad. Also, the total system input lag was also pretty reasonable, about 38 milliseconds, or pretty average for even gaming monitors I've tested. And a really nice feature or a added surprise is that this can run at 70 hertz out of the box without any overclock. Colors wise, this is a pre-calibrated monitor. Out of the box, you get a sheet that tells you not only the average delta E of just 1.4, but also the color and brightness uniformity, which is great to see. In my testing, I was seeing 116% coverage of the sRGB spectrum, and I was looking at about 80% roughly of both Adobe uh, RGB and DCI-P3 spectrums, which makes this a pretty impressive monitor for the amateur or even professional you know, creative type. Size is obviously gonna be a pretty big factor here. If you don't have the desk space for this, I totally understand. It's a good like four feet wide, which is just insane. And the stand itself is also pretty massive. You can probably see here and obviously with the, the clip on screen with my phone for scale, there is a lot of space in here and this does take up a lot of rooms, so you're gonna need a pretty large desk to be able to accommodate this. And it's also pretty heavy too. One nice thing about the stand is that you do still have a bit of adjustability. Now, of course, there's no portrait mode by default. So that'd be quite impressive to see that, but you do get a decent amount of tilt and height adjust. So that's always good to see. Inputs wise, you also have a pretty good selection. You have two HDMI ports, a display port and a USB type C, along with a USB three hub, which actually connects the webcam that's built in up at the top, which has a pretty cool mechanism to hide itself away when you're not using it and actually fully disables it as well. And as a final mention, you do also have adaptive sync in this, which means no matter which graphics card you have, and if you're gaming or if you're general office productivity, if your system drops below 60 or 70 FPS, depending on what you have it set at, it will still be a smooth and responsive experience, especially on the gaming front. It was actually very nice to see on my relatively underpowered RX 480 system I have under the desk. So what does all of this cost you then? Well, currently it's just over 900 pounds, squarely putting it in the premium end of the market. 
I think with its non-gamer focus and its pretty high price tag, it will mostly relegate this display to creative professionals and other sort of office workers who really want the 32 by 9 aspect ratio but don't necessarily care for it being a gaming monitor. I think this, you know, if you do have a grand lying around in your pocket that you're willing to blow on a monitor, this is a brilliant experience, but it is kind of hard to justify for well, everyone else. So with all that said, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the Super Ultra Wide? What do you think of this one specifically? And would you ever game on a, a Super Ultra Wide, especially if it was a higher refresh rate? Let me know in the comments and in the poll up above as well. Of course, if you want to see more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, take a look at that subscribe button with a bell notification icon to be notified of those new videos. You can also check out the links in the description to the monitor if you want to check out pricing when and where you want. Watch this the link will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see all of that and you can check out the rest of the links in the description if you want to support the channel there's stuff like Amazon and Overclocks UK affiliate links which don't cost you anything to use but massively help me out when you do use them there's also merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other designs and there's also Patreon if you want to get cool rewards and support me directly too you can also check out the rest of the links from stuff like Private Internet Access, which is a great and cheap VPN, or Humble Bundle for cheap games to support charities too. And you can check out some other videos all the way over there somewhere um, if you want to keep watching and maybe check out some normal ultra-wide reviews and see what the difference is. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. If you've got any questions, leave those in the comments down below and we'll see you all in the next video.